Coming to you from the Black Goat 39 Studios, this is the Guru Talk of Sports Podcast, episode 120. Now here's your host, the Guru of Sports. Hello, sports fans, and welcome. Welcome into episode 120 of the Guru Talk of Sports Podcast. I am your host, the Guru of Sports, and I just want to say thank you for uh, tuning in. Um, also, I want to say thank you to Caden uh, Guru for uh, episode we did with uh, Father's Day. And um, I wanted to also say uh, thank you to uh, Dante Guru. We actually, uh, you know, spoke right after that. And um, I just want to say that it was a it was a pleasure to talk to both of them and actually have Caden Guru here in the studio with me. Um, it's Saturday, uh, well, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Somewhere around in there. I don't know. what What is the rule now for uh, night or what is it? After 2 o'clock in the morning, it's actually uh, Sunday morning. It's around midnight right now. So I guess it's still Saturday night. Technically, I guess. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Anyway, I just want to say uh, we had a great episode last weekend. And, um, you know. Once again, it's always a pleasure to uh, have Caden Guru here. Guru is always in, you know, he's always at home or in down in Atlanta or he's in Dallas right now. So, you know, I, I do spend, you know, time. I talk with him all the time on the phone and everything. But, um, you know. His schedule is really busy too. He's a he's a busy guy. He uh, does a lot of stuff. He has a, you know a really really good job that he does, and you know I'm really proud of both of them. Um, they're good good kids, and um, it's good to have good kids when uh, you don't have to worry about you know going down to the police station or doing anything like that. All right. Coming up on the podcast today, we're going to talk about, uh, well, the first thing, uh, the biggest thing that happened yesterday was uh, the Yankees getting no hit in, uh, in Yankee Stadium, where they had won 15 games in a row, um, and their arch, arch nemesis, uh, the guys that they really cannot stand. The uh, Houston Astros shut them out and actually no hit them today. Uh, I'll talk about that. I'm gonna talk about the NBA draft and whatever. I, I can't explain what what went on on Thursday night. I I can't explain it, but I'm gonna try to do my best. Uh, talk about a little bit about what the Nets are gonna do, what the Lakers are gonna do, what the uh, Knicks are gonna do. Stanley Cup Finals, we didn't have a, uh, I was waiting, I watched, I tried to watch a little bit of the game on uh, Friday night, but I um, had to go to bed, and um, it was, you know, I, I thought I was going to wake up to a uh, new uh, champion, but um, Tampa survives, and they're going back to uh, Tampa for uh, the game later on today. Talk about the uh, passings of uh, Tony Saragusa and uh, uh, Jalen Ferguson. Um, also, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Flyers' new coach who they hired, which was you know kind of crazy. Um, Aaron Judge he gets he gets kind of paid or so. Um, I got a funny moment that I uh, mentioned mentioned myself, and um, I wanted I wanted to talk about that, and also like uh, like we've been doing uh, for the last several podcasts, and we'll continue 
until uh, we really don't have any more soundbite from him. But uh, we'll talk about Cousin Aaron uh, like we always do. And, um, you know, Father's Day, I guess, for uh, his son and his family um, was a little different. And, you know, I'll just mention that. And um, uh, we'll have some uh, something from Cousin Aaron. And like I said, always, we always have a, uh, I always have a chair that's open sitting right next to me. And um, Cousin Aaron, uh, that's his chair. We'll, you know, we'll always have a room here for uh, Cousin Aaron. We still, it's still, still a shock and still, Something that we can't, I, I try to, uh, you know, just try to uh, to kind of live with. And, you know, like I said, this podcast is, uh, has been really a good journey. But it was better when um, I had Cousin Aaron that was here with me as well. Okay, another thing is that um, we are... We're still about a couple months away from the uh, start of NFL season, and um, I don't. I'm. I'm, It's not like I don't like football. It's just that during the summertime, I just it's kind of hard for me to concentrate on football, especially with baseball going on, with the NBA Finals just wrapping up. Stanley Cup Finals is still on. Um, You got WNBA that's going on. You still got the USFL which uh, Birmingham is going to play Philadelphia in the championship. I think that's next Sunday. I'm going to have to check um, because I really, I I hate to say this, I haven't really been keeping up with the USFL with all the stuff that's been going on. And, um, you know, I I definitely uh, had to mention, I will mention that a a little bit. But anyway, uh, right off the top, uh, Birmingham, the team that was actually the home team for all the teams. They played in that Birmingham stadium. And half the time I used to watch these games, uh, it was like maybe 12 or 15 people were sitting in there. Um, That stadium was basically empty. So Birmingham beat New Orleans tonight, and uh, they will be going to the championship to face the Philadelphia Stars. And um, that's going to be pretty interesting. I'm – Definitely going to have to watch that, you know, just to see how it ends or so. Um, well, no, like I said, it's just uh, a lot of stuff going on in sports. Um, free agency in the NBA is actually happening on um, Thursday or, you know, right after the, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, probably next week or so. And, you know, we got there's a lot of stuff that's going on right now during the summertime. You know, I I always try to find something to talk about, and I usually do my research, uh, usually like on a Friday when I, you know, come home, you know, and, you know, it's kind of hard for me because, you know, being a truck driver and driving all over the place and, um, you know, I love my job. I love my job. I, I if, if I didn't mention it before, I want to tell you guys that I love my job. Uh, I think it's the greatest job. I've ever had, and, um, you know, some of the greatest people I ever I met was through this, uh, this company I'm working for right now. Also, I can't mention, I, you know, I got to mention my man, Chris, Chris Kerwin. Um, he's probably one of my favorite supervisors of, of all time. He is, uh, he's a great guy. He's also in my fantasy football team. I want to mention Chris that I'm definitely wrapping up the schedule, making sure that it'll, you know, it was done. Actually, me and Katie Guru finalized. You're all uh, that does that because I'm the league manager. I have that's my responsibility and I have to do it. Um, also, like I said, you know, we we got a lot of stuff that's going on. But um, I want to say this right off. Um, 
I am not, this is not a political show. This is not a political show at all. And I hate talking politics. As a matter of fact, I just, I try to tune myself out on politics. What happened yesterday was, uh, you know, it was something. I, I, I can't, I can't really explain or have any comment or opinion on what happened yesterday is because, you know, I, well, you know, I'm not a woman and two, um, I just don't know, you know, the, the, the situation with this and, and, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm like burying my head in the sand for the longest time or whatever. I just don't understand it. And I just don't want to go into something that, you know, um, there's something I can't really explain. So, um, also I do want to mention that, um, Caleb and Green Bay won the, uh, smack off the 28th smack off, uh, on the Jim Rome show on yesterday on, well, two days ago on Friday. And, uh, my man Rick and Buffalo came in, uh, came in six and, um, uh, really upset, really upset. And I thought that, uh, you know, him going last would give him the, the push. And, um, you know, it didn't, it didn't work out for him. Also, my man in Jefferson Southland, he didn't do too bad, but, um, the smack off is always a great radio, uh, listen. If you ever get a chance to listen to it. Um, another thing is that, uh, I've, I've heard all of them. I've been around the, uh, Jim Rome, Jim Rome show for about 30 years. And I remember the first one, I remember some classic calls and some classic moments from the, uh, smack off. I wanted to mention that because, uh, like I said, you know, my man Rick, uh, did the, uh, famous who loves your baby. And, um, I knew that was like, I, you know, when I heard that and I was like, Oh man. And remember a couple weeks ago, I had a sit down with Rick and, um, I was very, very confident that this would be the year that he, you know, make it. And, um, he didn't, unfortunately. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of upset and I know he's upset, but, um, you're going to try it next year. Definitely going to try it next year. And, um, I know he'll be back and he's always one of the great contenders, uh, up and coming. And, you know, it was a good, it was a good, uh, it was kind of lame at the beginning, to be honest. But, you know, like I said, Rick and Buffalo is a friend of the, friend of the podcast and we'll definitely have him back and he'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more, um, coming up pretty soon. Um, also I want to mention something about, uh, there's no more black goat entertainment. It's actually now we're called black goat sports. So now at the end of the podcast, I'm going to have to mention that, uh, this has been a praise presentation of black goat sports instead of black goat entertainment. So. Um, a lot of changes, everything changes. And, um, you know, from what I was told from black goat, uh, sports is that we're going to try to do everything we can to, uh, change it around, see what fits and try to make it the best podcast you can probably, you know, you can listen to. And believe me, I, we're not on the, uh, same level as some of the big heavy hitters, but you know what? This is, you know, the minor leagues, and we don't mind being in the minor leagues because there's always the ceiling is always going up, you know, or, or what's the expression? Uh, all, only we can only go upward instead of downward. Hopefully we don't go downward. So uh, as your host, I am trying to do everything I can to keep you entertained and uh, to, you know, let you come in here and listen to some good stuff that we basically have to talk about. Okay. Tell you what, uh, I'm going to take a break right here for right now. I'll be right back and then we'll start the uh, podcast 
We'll talk about the Yankees first, and then we'll get into the uh, whatever that was on Thursday night, the NBA draft. This is the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. This is episode 120. We'll be right back in just a moment. Hang with us. Sit tight. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. This is episode 120. That's right. We have 120 of these things. So, the big rivalry in baseball right now has got to be the uh, Houston Astros and the New York Yankees. For all it's worth, uh, they're the two best teams in the American League. And um, the way the Yankees have been playing, they have no competition. Um, Houston has been very scrappy and, you know, more or less a thorn in the uh, Yankee side for the last, you know, matter of fact, since they were caught cheating and uh, they cheated my Dodgers out of a World Series, um, Houston has been the, let's put it this way, Houston's been a real pain in the ass, Okay. Houston did a real pain in the ass for the Yankees, and the Yankees hate them. And they came into Yankee Stadium today, and they no-hit the uh, the Yankees. I couldn't believe it. When I heard about this, I was like, whoa. You know. Um, Christian Javier. Seven innings, 13 strikeouts. Hector Neves came in, struck out. He didn't strike out anybody, walked two people, and um, got away with no hits. Ryan Presley came in, uh, one inning, struck out two, and um, closed them out. Uh, three relievers uh, came, or two relievers came in, and uh, no hit the Yankees. And the Yankees have been really potent in their offense, and they've been, like, you know, basically the biggest thing. You know, they've, they've been really, really good this year. Um Really good, you know, is an understatement. They've been like murderers row. Um, I've heard that they, these guys have been compared to the 98 Yankees. I'm not sure if they're going to win as many games as the 98 Yankees, but it's a shock. You know, I was, I was watching baseball uh, a couple days ago, and I was, you know, actually on, watching it on my phone. I was on the road. I don't recognize this game anymore. I really don't. With these shifts and, you know, they're talking about maybe uh, uh, launch angles and all that. And, you know, I, I, I don't recognize this game anymore. It's kind of weird. You know, and, and you know, this is basically, I think this is like the third no-hitter in, uh, you know, baseball this year. You know, and then you got guys pitching into like the fifth inning or, the, you know, sixth inning or something like that. This uh, this guy, Javier, pitched into the seventh inning and struck out 13 guys. You know, they got to watch their pitch counts and all that. You know, I like baseball the way it was, you know. And I know that everything changes. Don't get me wrong. Everything does change. But you got to realize when it comes down to it, it's still a game. It's still a game, and it's played on the field, not by analytics and not by, you know, uh, you know, all this, you know, junk that's been going on with it. You know, I, I just really wish that the game was just a little bit, you know, faster. I do what I do kind of like, you know, the runner on second base and the uh, extra innings. I don't have a problem with that. But still, I just like to see the game move a little bit faster. Okay, one other thing I want to mention is about uh, Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge uh, was going to go to arbitration at uh, one o'clock on Friday afternoon, but they didn't go to arbitration because um, Judge was asking for twenty-one million. The Yankees offered seventeen million. So what they did was they kind of met in the middle and they gave Judge $19 million for the season. Now, I got a feeling, I got a really, really good feeling 
that Judge is probably going to walk away from the Yankees uh, after this because, you know, they gave him a low ball uh, offer of $213 million for $213 million for like maybe what, uh, seven years, six years or something like that? I don't know. But I figure this. You know, the team like the uh, Padres or the uh, Dodgers or the Mets, one of those teams could probably end up with uh, Aaron Judge and give him 300. You know, the guy's going to win the MVP in the uh, American League. So, you know, being a Yankee is a, is a good honor, you know, I guess. I'm a Dodger fan, so. You know, I, I I don't have no I don't have no disrespect for the Yankees. The Yankees are who they are, you know, and they have been you know the best. You know, with them is just basically, hey, if you don't win the World Series, it's a failed season, no matter what. You know, they can win 150 games, and they still don't win the World Series. That's a that's a complete uh, fall on the face. But you know, that's that's the way baseball is right now. You know, you figure, hey, you know, you got a lot of guys making a lot of money. You know, all they want to do is win. Some of them do. Some of them just want to get paid. But, you know, I got a feeling that Aaron Judge is probably going to walk after this because, of you know, the low ball offer they gave him. And this year they, you know, didn't give him what he wanted. He wanted 21, and he got 19. So, I don't know. That's my opinion. I think he's going to be walking pretty soon. All right. Now, let's go to the NBA. NBA draft. I I, I don't know. I, I can't understand how uh, this draft. I mean, this draft was kind of, you know, you know Keegan Murray and uh, Chet Holmgren and, you know, Pablo Banchero. Banchero went first to Orlando. Yeah, that's a good pick. For Orlando, you know they're going to have a lot of good young players, just like Oklahoma City is going to have a lot of young good players. I think Chet Holmgren is going to be a superstar. I don't know me personally. I think he's going to be a superstar. He's probably going to end up putting on a little bit more weight. But the guy they say he's a cross between Sean Bradley and his stature and uh, Kevin Durant. He can shoot the ball. You know, forty percent from three point range is not bad. You know, I wish I could do that on my um, my guy on uh, NBA 2K, but, you know, he can't shoot a lick. Anyway, um, you know, they had that Kyrie, Kevin Durant thing. I don't know what they're going to do. You know, this is one thing. The Nets are, you know, they got the team, they got the team together. The only thing they needed was a couple more pieces, you know, not to go in and get swept by Boston again, like they did. But, you know, hopefully uh, they can work these things out. And I I don't think, you know, Kyrie's got a list and said he's going to play with certain teams, you know, and, you know, he's walking away from like a $17 million uh, offer. You know, he might go to L.A. to to the Clippers or the Lakers. If he plays with the Lakers, then that's going to, you know, he's going to have to sign like a, you know, veterans minimum or whatever. I just don't want, I, you know what? Gosh, I, the Lakers are a mess anyway. I think they're going to turn around and under Darvin Ham. But the thing is, is that they don't need, they don't need this, you know, more fuel to this circus than what they, you know, already have, you know. And Russell Westbrook and Kyrie, LeBron and Anthony Davis, that would just be a whole big nightmare. You know, just stay put, Kyrie, please. Stay put, Kyrie, for my sake, for my Nets' sake. Just stay put. You know, but the the Nets said, hey, look, basically, you know, you might be walking. You know, we, we might not even pay you that big, big salary or whatever. But I don't know. I just want I, I just want this whole thing. You know, we'll see here in a couple of days with the free agency and all that. 
But um, like I said, it's just a mess with the Nets right now, and hopefully uh, they can fix that situation. You know, like I mentioned before, the Stanley Cup is uh, – it was in the building in Colorado the other day, Paul Arena. It was there, but uh, uh, Avalanche couldn't close them out. Then they had a situation where they had six men on the ice and six men on the ice. Oh, God. Same thing happened to Toronto the other night. John Cooper was so upset he couldn't talk about it. But they did catch it, and they took away a goal or so. And that the Avalanche, I like the Avalanche. I want them to win the Stanley Cup only because uh, they beat the Rangers. And uh, I just wish that the Rangers could have had a better – you know, they could have been better. But, you know, like I said, this has been a pretty good Stanley Cup final. I've been watching it. I definitely watch it. Watch more of the Stanley Cup finals than I did uh, the NBA finals, only because Stanley Cup finals has been a little bit better, a lot better, in television ratings as well. All right, um... I did want to say something about live golf, but, you know, I look at it this way. uh, The PGA is going to have a real have a real problem on their hands because now they're trying to figure out if they can. You know, they're going to open up some of the things that they can open up to try to compare, you know, give the golfers a little bit more money and um, probably a little bit you know, more time away from the golf course instead of doing the things that, you know, kind of like they're they're just going to have to try to open up a little bit more because they cannot compete with uh, Live Golf with their uh, salary. You know, you guys got uh, Brooks Koepka just left for the uh, Live Tour and he's going to get $150 million. You know, that's a lot of money, but... I don't know. I just, I just kind of wish that, uh, you know, the money that they're getting wasn't dirty money. You know, um, John Rahm had made a statement a couple of days ago or about a week ago about how he wanted to be on the uh, PGA Tour instead of the Live Tour. I thought it was really good and interesting. And I thought that Ron made a lot of sense. He said, hey, you know, this is what I wanted to do. And the money that I'm making, I already have enough for my grandkids, grandkids. So, you know, I hope, I don't know. This might be a a passing thing, but then again, you never know. You know, sports mergers are pretty interesting. Um, To me, I think it's just a cash grab. Cash grab right now for, uh, you know, people trying to uh, use their dirty money to influence guys to make a change. I don't see it. I just don't see it. But that's all now. All right. Before we go to the end of the uh, period, I just wanted to mention that the uh, Philadelphia Flyers did. Hi, John Tortorella. <laughs> John Tortorella. Oh, boy. Uh, they haven't won a Stanley Cup since 1975, and I figure probably by the end of the, uh, let's say the hockey season of 26, Tortorella probably won't be there, and he won't oh, probably won't win a Stanley Cup there as well. So, Philadelphia, your time is on the clock. You know you haven't won a uh, uh, haven't won a Stanley Cup since '75, and like I mentioned, a couple, uh, I guess, uh, uh, how many episodes back or so? I told you guys, I gave you a list of all the teams that won the Stanley Cup after Philadelphia, and Philadelphia hasn't been back to Stanley Cup since like the mid-90s or something like that. So, 
Anyway, um, I want to talk about Tony Saragusa and Jalen Ferguson. Jalen Ferguson was uh, a guy that the uh, Ravens drafted a couple years ago. He passed away, and uh, we don't know what his situation was. We don't know. Um, some said it might have been drug overdose. Uh, I have no comment because I just don't know. And I can't comment on anything that I don't know about. And I don't want to speculate or so. But, um, you know, it was rough, it was rough for the uh, Baltimore Ravens this week. And, um, you know, my hometown, my hometown team that, you know, I do root for. I root for the Orioles and I root for the Baltimore Ravens. That's my hometown. So I'm going to. You know, always, no matter what teams I root for, Dodgers, you know, Jaguars, Lakers, whoever, I'm still going to root for my hometown. And um, it was rough this week because we also lost uh, Tony Saragusa, the Goose, uh, you know, won that Super Bowl 35 against the Giants, and he was a good football player, good personality, too. You know that he actually played in one of my favorite movies, and that was called The 25th Hour. Um, great movie, great movie. If, you ever, if you've never seen it, try to go watch it. Check it out. It's called The 25th Hour. Really, really good, uh, really good movie. Um. Saragusa was one of the guys that, you know, like, you know, he basically was a, uh, he made it, he made the uh, sideline reporting thing interesting because it was like the first time you had like a, on a guy that was like retired from the league and, you know, a big guy, lineman that, uh, you know, would be like the sideline reporter and talk about things on the sideline with the uh, players or so. And, you know, he was just basically uh, a good guy, you know, from what I've heard. It's just so so shocking when, um, you know, you hear about these things and hear about how young Saragusa was. You know, 55 years old is not, is not, uh, not old at all. And uh, we lost him. You know, I get really, really, uh, I, I think I told uh, a friend of mine I was talking to a couple of days ago, and um, I told her that um, I'm not good with death. I'm not. I'm really not. So uh, sometimes when I, you know, think about Cousin Aaron, and I think about some of the things that, uh, you know, like this week with the Ravens losing two players, um, it just kind of hits me differently, I guess. I just try to, uh, you know, kind of remember people for, you know, the way they treated me or the way, you know, I interact with them. And like I said, you know, I'm still, still really, uh, really touched by uh, the passing of cousin Aaron as well. Um, it's really hard. It's really, really hard. Um, it's hard to fathom. It's hard to uh, talk about, and it's hard to, uh, you know, try to try to move forward. Um, I did tell you guys a couple weeks ago about how, uh, my, um, one of my dogs, uh, was, got killed and, um, it's still pretty hard for me to think about her as well. Even though I understand a lot of people will say, Hey, it was just a dog. But the thing about it is that, you know, animals that we have are family, you know? I have two uh, 
dogs, two little dogs, and they're like my little children, and I love them very, very dearly. When I come home from off the road and everything, uh, it's just a joy to see them, and they get the, the joy that they have when they see me and let me know that, you know, they, they love you. They love, animals love you unconditionally, and that's what I love about them. You know, no matter what, they love me. And it's funny because, uh, you know, I love them too. Well, I'm going to end this uh, first half, and uh, I'm going to be back in a few. We're going to talk about uh, a funny thing that happened to me this week. And uh, I'll explain it to you because, uh, well, I am I am sort of a clown, and I like being you know uh, making people laugh or people laughing at me. So it doesn't matter. Um, that's me, you know. But you know, I'm a good-hearted person, and I just try to do the right things and just try to uh, live life kind of you know kind of kind of crazy like but you know like I said I just uh I'll be back in a in a little bit just thinking right now and I definitely need this break to uh kind of clear up some clear up a few things in my head so you guys hang with me I'll be right back you guys this is halftime and uh where's that damn goatee at all right goatee goatee's gonna uh, in this, we're going to end this uh, period or this half with Goaty, and um, I'll be right back. You guys stick with me. This is episode 120 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. We'll be back in just a moment. Hang tight. Okay, we are back, second half, and um, like I was saying in the uh, – at the end of the first half, um, I did mention uh, a few things about, uh, I guess, life and death. I try to, uh, I try to compartmentalize these things, and I try to uh, not really dwell. Not not the word dwell, or I just try to. Uh, you know, keep them in perspective. And um, like I said, some of these things are very hard to deal with. You know, it's very hard to deal with. Um, having PTSD doesn't help as well. So, you know, like I said, I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, my condolences go out to the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Um, the fans down in my hometown of Baltimore, the families of uh, Jalen Ferguson and the family of Tony Saragusa. Um, may they rest in peace. I say that as well. And, you know, like I said, everything that I try to do, uh, try to do it in the right manner and try to make sure that, uh, you know, the proper respect for, Tony Saragusa and Jalen Ferguson as well. And it's hard because when you, you know, it's just hard. I'll just finish it at that. All right. I got a funny thing that happened to me this week. Um, you know, last week was Father's Day. And um, it was funny because, like, uh, every Father's Day, um, I usually wear uh, this shirt that came in. Uh, guru bought for me and um like i said he had he had, we have like a couple i have a couple shirts that he bought for me and he had uh one shirt that he had made where uh his handprints are all over it when he was like in the fourth or fifth grade something like that it's kind of kind of funny looking and, and you know it's a really cool shirt and he said he made it for me he said hey daddy i made this for you and i was like okay cool really appreciate it so, the shirt that he bought me, the other shirt that he bought me, was a uh, shirt with lobsters on it. 
It's a white, you know, button-down shirt with uh, red, little red lobsters on it. And I thought that was, like, funniest thing I've ever seen. So, a couple weeks ago, here's a funny, here's the story. A couple weeks ago, um, my favorite radio sh show, the uh, DA show, Damon Amanda Laura and um, Sean Marash, Andrew Bogish, Pete the Body Bilotti. Um, these guys had this remote at this uh, at Sean's house and um, their backyard, and they call it Bob's Bar. So he wore this outfit. I don't know. His wife bought it for him. And the outfit was, like, so cool. I thought it was so cool. It was, uh, I think he had the uh, black, he had, no, I'm sorry. He had blue, uh, a blue set, a blue uh, set with uh, flamingos on it. And I thought that was pretty funny. I thought it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. So I said, you know what? I might as well get one of those outfits because, hey, if he looks cool in that, I want to look cool in it. I, you know what? Hey, look, you know, sometimes you say, you know, hey, you know, you see something, you say, well, you know, I might look cool in that. And I think I do look pretty cool. Well, I'm a handsome guy anyway. But I mean, I figure like this. Hey, look, I can wear that. You know, I, I think I can be pretty cool in that. So, I get this, I get it, and um, I wear it around on Father's Day, and Katie Guru is like, Dad, you look funny. You look really, really funny with that on. I said, thank you. He said, no, you look like real funny, You're like real, real, it's, it's weird to see you in something like this, and you always wear your lobster shirt, but you know, I thought, you know. I said, don't I look cool? He's like, yeah, you look cool. Like a cool fool. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, you made me feel better now that you said I look like a cool fool. Okay. Now, I tweeted out the picture, and I tweeted out the picture to uh, to uh, DA and, and, and Sean and uh, Andrew, and um, they had something funny to say about it. I want you guys to listen to this clip, and this is a clip from um, <laughs> from the other day, and I want you guys to check this out. Um, check this out. Brady saw all the hard work of being home with kids, and you know, decided football was actually way easier. Right after Wrong that. Mac and Bear Delaware tweets. Good morning, DA. This McDonald's, the McDonald's in Japan, are among the best. Really, Mraz, do you do you believe that you went to a McDonald's in Japan? And right you'd after be fine, you'd, you'd get everything that you wanted. It would taste great. Uh, yeah, but again, if I if I'm in Japan, I have a hard time imagining I'm going to McDonald's. So I don't know. I, I don't know that. I mean, right? I mean, if you fly there, is that are you going out of your way to try their McDonald's? I wouldn't. All right. Now we were talking about. They were talking about food and um. Me, like I said, I lived, when I was in the Navy, I lived in Japan for uh, nine months. So, you know, yeah, I, all the time we would go to uh, different sushi, you know, restaurants and stuff like that, Japanese food and all. But after a while, I kind of got like kind of homesick. So I would go to McDonald's and to tell you the truth, the McDonald's in Japan are really, really good. Now, my Twitter handle name is Mac in Bear Delaware. It's Go39 Mac in Bear Delaware. If you are at Go39, if you if you ever check that out. So this is what you know. I'm known on the show as Mac and Mac and Bear Delaware. Okay, on the DA show, this, these guys they're referring to me. So. We were talking about uh, McDonald's, and, um, you know, that came up. So I want you to listen to the rest oh, of the clip. Out of my way, there's no chance I would try anything for McDonald's. <laughs> right. I'm in Japan for three days, six days, whatever. 
I'm only eating Japanese food. Right, exactly. You want to try what's local, absolutely. I guess if I'm there on business all of the time, maybe. But By the way, Mac and Bear Delaware is so cool. Did you see, you got kind of crucified for your flamingo outfit at the Bob's Bar Show. Actually, kind of polarizing. Some people really liked it. Most people couldn't stand it. It was kind of a jumpsuit. It was black. It had pink flamingos on it. It was the sign of summer for you. <laughs> it wasn't a jumpsuit. It was two separate parts, okay? The bottom was allowed to go in water and the top. People thought I was wearing a male romper. I was not. Mac and Bear Delaware bought this very same outfit and donned it and modeled it and then put it on Instagram on Twitter. And Twitter, did you see this? Yes, and he looked way better in it than I did. Way better. He, you know... <laughs> He's a good-looking man. He looks he really way is. better than me. He's a handsome man. I mean, but he's got his hands out of the side like, can you believe what I just did? Did McNamara Delaware already have this ordered and couldn't believe that you also wore it? Or no. saw you wear it at the Bob's Bar Show and said, I need that? So, no. He, I believe, messaged me or tweeted at me, whatever. He tried to contact me immediately following the Bob's Bar Show to say, I need that outfit. Where did you get that outfit? And I could tell you, essentially in typical DA show Twitter fashion, before I could truly even answer him, because my wife had ordered it, Rob and the 321 had already tweeted at him the link of where to order it on Amazon. <laughs> Man, so Rob is basically our marketer, our yeah. PR, our publicist, our secretary. He does everything for us. Couldn't wait to assert himself and get him that link. <laughs> uh, and it worked, though. I mean, he did get him it, and Mac and Pear loved it. Uh, and he looks, again, way better at it than me. It's a real sign of the summer. Maybe this becomes, you know, Mirage chic. People start wearing this everywhere, and I'm the model for it. <laughs> Mirage chic. Dictator chic. Todd tweets, I think White Castle might take exception to you giving credit to McDonald's for creating the burger that tastes... Okay, now, a few things there. Um, I appreciate DA and uh, Mirage saying that I'm a... Oh, good looking man, which I am. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, I did tweet out a picture. Like I said, I tweeted out the picture of uh, of him wearing his and me wearing mine. I yeah, I put it out there because like like I said, hey, I like I like anything that's like kind of kind of flashy that'll give me you know a little bit of you know pizzazz or whatever. You know, hey, I look at it this way. I, I try to uh I try to live kinda like to the point where you know, I don't take myself seriously. And I will I don't want anyone to take me seriously. I I mean, but the thing about it is that, you know, I like to laugh and joke and that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about it. Because, you know, I said, Well hell, if I if I got this outfit it would make, you know, it would, you know, their show is basically crazy. And I'm like, hey, I'm like kind of crazy. So, you know, it's like, I guess it's where all the nuts and bolts kind of landed or whatever. That's, you know, loose nuts and bolts or whatever. You know, they said that about uh, California. Hey, they said, you know, when uh, when the country shook out all the loose nuts and bolts, they all landed in California. And, you know, that's where I got that slogan from. Anyway, I I really appreciate these guys because they they have the funniest show on on radio, and um, I've been I've been listening to sports radio now since about probably the late eighties, uh, early nineties or so, and like I said, I've been listening to Jim Rohn for almost thirty years. Um, these guys are great at what they do. No matter what they do, it's always something to make you laugh. To make you know, and it's it's a good show where they make you laugh, they make you think, they make you know, they bring up a lot of good things, and I really appreciate just them keeping me company while I'm doing my job, while I'm driving. You know, I'm always looking at six o'clock in the morning. I know that I'm getting up. I'm going to be, you know, entertained by them. And, you know, God bless them. You know, all four of those guys, they are really, really great. 
I got a chance to meet Andrew Bogish. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story about him. He is probably one of the best announcers I've ever heard. You know, and he's he's he does Delaware football. He does New York Mets uh, uh, baseball post game. He does the updates for uh, CBS Sports Radio. One of the greatest guys I ever met and uh, nicest guys I ever met, too. Uh, I was nervous when I met him. And uh, he said the other way around, I, he said he was nervous when he met me. But believe me, I was nervous when I met him because uh, I know that, you know, doing podcasts and like I said, years ago, year and years and years ago, around like 84, 85, I tried to get into radio. I tried to get into radio and I wasn't able to. Um, I ended up doing like farm reports for uh a local radio show, radio station out in California. I don't even think they exist anymore. But anyway, I, you know, that was my, uh, that was my radio career. But the thing about it is that, you know, now that, you know, years down the road now here, um, these guys are pros and, um, I, I respect anyone that, uh, I, I really respect Andrew for taking the time out to meet me and talk to me and talk to uh, Kaden Guru. Which it is. It is a Hall of Fame product to me. And, you know, one day when DA and the guys go up there to accept the uh, Hall of Radio Hall of Fame uh, induction, uh, hopefully I'll be there to, you know, to cheer them on. Because uh, they've meant a lot to me, and they got me through, a, you know, they, they, they've got me through a lot of... Uh, stressful times and I really appreciate them and um thank you guys for uh you know just mentioning me and that that makes me uh it gives me a little bit of uh you know a little bit of uh laughter that I I, I kind of need some of these times um I'm gonna end the podcast like I usually do um, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mention a little bit about uh, something about Cousin Aaron. And um, like I said, uh, Father's Day. Last week was a great Father's Day, but I know that, you know, uh, Miss Ann and uh, his sons and his uh, family uh, felt that void. And I just wanted to say to them that, uh, you know, I'm always going to be thinking about you guys and I'm always going to, uh, you know, try to give you guys a little bit of, uh, cousin Aaron as we remember him as you know, we remember him. And I just wish that, you know, I'm, you know, I'm still looking at some of, you know, trying to find more audio that I can of him and, you know, some of the comp comfort, you know, uh, conversations, excuse me, conversations that we had on the air. Um, here's Cousin Aaron with uh, some shout outs like he usually did. And um, he enjoyed doing shout outs. And um, I want you guys to check this out. This is Cousin Aaron right here with his shout outs. Aaron, and he's going to do his shout outs. Cousin Aaron, go ahead. Hey, hey, all right, Guru. Well, as always, this portion of the show is brought to you by My NFL Views, a weekly publication sponsored by me, which highlights at least three games per week on games of my choice. That's the NFL. All right, at this time, I'd like to give a special shout out. There's two of them. A happy uh, belated birthday to Roxanne Meeker. Her name is Roxanne Meeker. She's a 
karaoke extraordinaire, a great singer, beautiful lady. Also to Denise Hargrove as baby mama. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my son's mother, Denise Hargrove, had a recent birthday also. So congrats to them. Now for the shout outs. First of all, I'd like to say uh, to my man, uh, Gerard Pinkney. He has a show coming later on tonight at 7 p.m. at the Bethesda Blues and Jazz Supper Club. Uh, GP Promotion presents a holiday tribute to the late Barry White featuring Jordan Carroll. That's tonight at the Bethesda Blues and Jazz Supper Club located at 7719 Wisconsin Avenue in Bethesda, Maryland. Doors open at 5 p.m. Showtime is 7 p.m. Don't forget, tonight, Sunday, December the 19th, the big show at Bethesda Blues and the Jazz Supper Club. Now, I want you to shout out. Some of this list is from last week. So, fashion your seatbelts, because here I go with the shout out. John Bunny Butler, Gerard Payne, who I just mentioned, uh, he is the CEO of GP Productions. William Washington, George Bay Thomas, Matt the Sniper Sweet, Marie Antoinette Green, Diane Dickinson, and Shirley Dickinson. They were the dancers when I used to perform for me. So uh, shout out to them. Terry Savage, Joe Fenwick, Johnny Brown, DJ Jimmy D, one of the best DJs on the East Coast, Greg Boyer, Robert Mousy Thompson, and the JP Experience, along with the fantastic Greg Cooper, who does the James Brown, James Brown impersonation? Joe Bennett, Boy Henson, Jimmy Pogue, OG Mace, Henry Balls Hard Baldwin, Walter Lucky Evans, and to An Anissa Hargrove, who is a background vocalist for many RB groups these days, and is a solo artist in her own right. Yana Carey, a dancer with James Brown, and, uh, Showtime Busby, Jim Bennett, Anya Myers, my niece, Bush Farrar, my brother, Sheila Brooks, a dear friend of mine, down in, uh, I think it's uh, Shawnee, yeah, Shawnee, Maryland, Erica Bronner, Alex Bronner, Alice Bronner, Devonnie Farrar, my granddaughter, Brian in Blue, Betty Davis, Diane Yates, Ronnie Goldwing, George Jones, Cherish, Terrell, Gina Datcher, my friend, Frank Calhoun, William Sharon, Dolla Morrow, Teresa Brooks, John Yates, Michael Ross, Mr. Horseman, Joe Gaskins, Rick Buckles, Patrick Donahue, Leroy Conti, Vernon Myers, Linda Reese, and her son Rob Reese, great friends of mine, Darrell Briscoe and his wife Anna, and the kids, they're cowboy, uh, not cowboy, <laughs> Washington football uh, team fans. Kitty Boots, Cornell Bikes, Ernest Bennett, Karen Adams, Lee Cal Briscoe, Renee Smoot, the monster boy, Colin Pee Wee Penny, sounds like a little league player, but he's a grown man. Diane Matthews, Wanda Wills Woodland, Wendelin Johnson Bay, Gilbert Pryor, Wondell Brown, and Lenny Harris, the great. NWO horn players, Billy Fitzgerald, Leon Briscoe, Nick Johnson from WPFW Radio in DC, Betsy Hill, and my son, Devin Farrar. I would be remiss not to, to, to mention Ann Riddle, who is my computer technical advisor for this portion of the show. Guru, I thank you very much. I'm sorry that this was so long, man, but I had to get them in, and if 25% of these people I just named would subscribe to the show, later on in the show, the guru would tell you how to reach them for suggestions, comments, and anything that's on your mind. Okay, even if you want to talk about other subjects like uh, sex education, anything. <laughs> anything you feel like bringing up for the guru, he'll give you the number to reach them, and it won't be the hotline for me. It'll be the number he wants for you to contact him. So back to you. Ooh. 
right, thank you, Cousin Eric. All right, now, I want to tell you guys another little funny story, and I'm glad that I have uh, time to do it, which always, I got plenty of time. I got plenty of time to talk about Cousin Eric. Um, one time, the number I give out to you guys is 302-468-7239. 302-468-7239. Now, that is my, um, that is the number that I tell people to call. Now, I have a hotline number, which I, you know, I can't give that out to you guys. Certain people have the uh, hotline number, and then certain people have my personal number. Okay, I can't give out the personal number because that's the personal number. One time, Cousin Aaron uh, told me, he said, I've been trying to reach you. I said, well, yeah, I'm here. What, what was the number you trying to call? He said, 302 Four six eight seven two three nine. I said, I said, don't you have my regular uh, other number? He said, Yeah, I do. But um, I thought I was supposed to call. I said, No, cousin Aaron, you call you call me personally. You call you have you have uh, the Black Goat thirty nine office number. You have my personal number. Don't call a hotline for everybody. I was like, I said, dude, dude, you don't have to call that number. He said, oh, you know what? You're right. I don't have to call that number. And we sat there and we laughed about that for the longest time. And that was one of the things I told him. I said, and I mentioned that on the show one time. I mentioned that on the podcast one time. I said, this number is for, you know, people out there to call and leave me messages for the podcast. Cousin Aaron said, and I said to him, I said, I'm, I said, I'm going I'm to tease you. I'm going to get you this time. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on a podcast. I'm going to tell everybody that you call this number instead of calling me personally or my personal number. <laughs> so we joked about that and laughed about that. And I said, I think I said something to the point of, uh, for everyone out there, I want you guys to call this number, 302-468-7239, except for Cousin Aaron. Cousin Aaron, do not call that. You're not going to call that number. He said, no, I'm not going to call that number. He said, I got your personal number, and I got the uh, Black Goat 39 uh, office number, so I'll call that. I'm like, okay. So we sat up and joked about that. And um, like I said, we used to sit and joke about a lot of different things. We, we actually, uh, like I said, you know, for me, he was like my big brother. Uh, the brother, you see, that's the thing. I'm the oldest one in my family on both sides, my father's side, my uh, mother's side. So I had no big brother to look up to. And he was my big brother, more or less. And, um, you know, it's funny because like, uh, you know, like I said, when I was growing up, I had no one to look up to. Um, when my siblings were growing up, they always had somebody to look up to. And it was funny, but um, <laughs> I told Cousin Aaron, I said, you know, I really appreciate um, you, you, you being here with me because it made me feel like, hey, I had someone I can talk to, you know. And like now, I don't. So I'm going to try to, you know, I'm going to try to keep the, the memory of Cousin Aaron alive with this. And like I said, you know, I'm probably going to run out of, uh, run out of sound clips for him, but I'm going to do the best I can. And, uh, I'm definitely going to have to find that conversation we had about jazz and music. And I think what I was going to do was uh, tell him we were supposed to have another conversation about how 
the best. Uh, we w- we was into guitars. We had talked to guitars, and I think it was about drummers. I think that was it. We was talking about drummers, and then I told him, I said, next week we're going to talk about horns. We're going to talk about guitars, and all that stuff. And we never got a chance to do it. So I definitely uh, wish I had give had more time to talk to him about those things. But we don't have that much time. We don't have that much time in the world. But I want to say that uh, for the time that we had, that we did spend together, it was great. And I really appreciate it. All right. um, One other thing I do want to mention before uh, I go into uh, all the stuff about the podcast and where you can find us is that uh, I got a chance to talk to a couple of my cousins this week. And um, one of my cousins, I uh, a couple of my cousins, one of my cousins I haven't seen in about 50 years. And that's a long time. And the other one, uh, she had a daughter, so I, I've never met her before. But I had to, you know, kind of like, you know, when you meet people, your relatives that you never have, you haven't met before, you have to kind of like, uh, you kind of like have to, you know, identify yourself more or less. And I know that, you know, I had this phone number in my, um, in my phone for the longest time. And I never knew that I, I thought that this number probably wasn't going to work or whatever. But I called it and I made, I called it and someone answered the phone. And I talked to, uh, my cousin's, uh, granddaughter. And it was something else. It was just like really, really cool. The thing about it is that, you know, with me, I'm a family person. And like I said, I, I always try to, uh, make sure that I, uh, I, I try to keep up with family. And I hope that uh, one day I can be able to see all of my family and see them, you know, just visit them. And, you know, like I said, these, uh, this part of my family lives down in Virginia. And um, it's kind of ironic because I've been driving down to Virginia now for a little while. So I, you know, I'm definitely going to try to make some plans to see them while I'm down there. And, um, it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. But, um, I want to tell you guys that, you know, whatever you do, try to keep in touch with your family, try to keep in touch with your mom, your dad, you know, your family, because they are your family. We don't get to pick and choose our family, but we all know that, our family, we love our family, and um, I got I got such a gigantic family, and like I told you before, that if I had to, uh, you know, cousin Aaron might be, I, I'm not sure where he falls in line, but he might be one of my relatives on my father's side. That you know, like I said, it's just so gigantic. It's it's got to be at least three. Anywhere from three to five hundred people in my family on that side, so that's why I always look at family, and um, I just try to locate as much as much of much of them as possible. Okay, guys, I really appreciate this episode, and uh, I hope that you know you enjoy it, and I hope it was uh, pretty cool for you. I, I enjoyed it because. I get a chance to talk about family. I get a chance to, you know, get talk about a couple things off my chest to get off my chest. And, um, you know, a little bit of sad things with, uh, two passings and, um, you know, also remembering cousin Aaron, but I think it's a really good episode and, uh, I'll be glad when you, uh, get a chance to listen to it. And tell me what you think. Like I said, you can find me at 
the guru of sports show on YouTube. And um, every time I do this podcast, it automatically uploads to our YouTube. So if you, you know, even if you research uh, the guru of sports show on YouTube, you can listen to this podcast, which is a cool thing. Um, Facebook, I'm at Gurus Daily Shorts, and I'm also at Gurus Briscoe on Facebook. And on that, I have two Facebook, uh, I have two Facebooks because one of them got hacked. If you find Gurus Briscoe, uh, uh, add me as a friend and I'll, uh, definitely add you as a friend as well. Um, on IG, it's called Guru Talking Sports underscore podcast. All right. Gmail is the same. Gurus Daily Shorts at gmail.com. Uh, I'm at Goat39 on Twitter. Mac and Bear, like I told you, and from the episode or uh, from the what we heard on uh, that sound clip from the DA show, Mac and Bear Delaware. Uh, podcasts, you can find us on Spreaker, Spotify, Podchasers. I found something called Pod, Pod, uh, I forget the name of it, but it was, um, something new that I found, uh, found myself on, or found the, uh, podcast on, but I, I can't remember the name. I'll have it for you next week. iHeart, uh, Amazon, you know, I can't say her name because she's right behind me. Um, iTunes and all that. Uh, like I said, I always give big props to, uh, Mary Mac, the Mary Mac show on grief and check out her, uh, website, grief authority, really good stuff. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, my man, Jeff Duarte, um, Cali sports news. I know he's still, he might be going to, uh, Tampa for, I know he's been keeping up with the Stanley Cup Finals, but I think he might be in Tampa tomorrow or or later on today. I'm sorry. Today is Sunday. Later on today for the uh, finals. And uh, if it ends there, uh, he'll, he'll wrap up that. Um, my cousin Curtis uh, and his grandson, Jarrett, the Young GM podcast, Part of uh, Guru's uh, Black Goat Sports, which I had to mention. Um, the Hip Hop Brothers, my man Danny Rivera, Mr. Schick, uh, good guy, great guy. Um, he's really good, really good friend, really good guy. Uh, my man, my main man, uh, Dave May Jr., my baseball insider, he's a scout for the Toronto Blue Jays. He's out there right now. And like I said, I don't bug him during the season because I know he's doing his thing. But uh, definitely had to get him back in here for football season. Uh, the DA Illuminati Originals, uh, they're from the uh, uh, DA show, which I just played on CBS Sports Radio. They come on every uh, Monday through Friday. 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. on the East Coast. Um, and like I said, a shout out to all my DL and brothers and sisters out there. And um, I have a new uh, saying, uh, Mac loves you, baby. <laughs> I like that. You know, there's a little bit of Telly Savalas, uh, you know, Kojak thing in there. But Mac loves you, baby. <laughs> all right. Katie Guru is uh, my. That is our motto. And also, use that hashtag, Guru Talking Sports, 
and the hashtag big props. I appreciate you guys. Uh, you know, thank you guys. And I want to say a couple of shout outs myself to Bella B. Um, my man, Jeff and Southland did a great job in the smack off. Rick and Buffalo did a great job in the smack off. My friend Mel, appreciate you. My man, Dixieland Dan, uh, Mike, uh, Alberta Girl 34, that's Lori, appreciate you. Uh, Rob, Senior, uh, Art, Coach, uh, uh, really, really appreciate you guys. Uh, Justin, um, friends from Facebook, Charlie Rogers, Chris Kerwin, uh, my friend Kate uh, from, uh, from work. Also, Christian, and I also, Betty, I really appreciate you guys. Denise Hyde, Jeff Brown, Keith Stewart, um, Big Allen Kareem, Jamie Dorsey, Mike Fox, appreciate you. Um, Cousin Damien, appreciate you. Uncle Gary, appreciate you. Um, appreciate you all. Thank you. And like I said, um, this is episode 120. We'll be back next week with episode 121. And like we usually do, we will leave you with uh, a moment of silence. This time we're going to remember uh, Tony Saragusa and Jalen Ferguson. And we always do the moment of silence for Cousin Aaron as well. I am the guru. Be back here next week. You guys take care of yourself. Oh, also, my cousin Paul, I want to mention him. Shout out to my cousin Paul, and congratulations to uh, the graduate. Um, All the graduates. Matter of fact, a shout out to all the graduates and fathers. June is grads and dads month, and we appreciate them both. Um, Like I was saying before, uh, we get out of here. And we leave you with a moment of silence. We'll be back next week. Episode 121 will be in in the house. You guys take care of yourself. Peace, love, and be safe out there. The Guru.